Hello everyone and welcome to the Authentic E-Design course. Officially the course started yesterday, Monday the 9th of January, so I just wanted to say a quick hello and to give you a very brief overview of the course. Um, you can see that I'm on the Moodle course, on the Moodle LMS here at the moment. You can see my profile up here in the top right and in the main section here is the main content and the navigation on the left. So in the LMS itself, um, there's not a lot of information. Most of the information that will help you complete the task throughout the course is on the companion website. And you'll understand why when you read more of the information on the companion website, I'm using a very open learning environment. So this course could be done by other people after the course at their own pace if they wanted to, and it will be available if you want to go back and refer to any of the information. But just a couple of things in the LMS. Um, as you see the different tasks and information come up, you can see here on the right hand side there's a little tick box. So as you complete something, you can actually keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done by clicking these things on and off. So um, when you've done something, you can tick it off and keep moving through and it will just help you keep track of where you're at throughout the course. The introduction activities are just um, to get you started and to get you signed up into the groups and some of the tools that um, you'll be exposed to throughout the course, such as the Digo, Google Docs and Skype. The information here on the readings and discussions is generally to encourage you to chat to each other and to discuss the readings and to think about them and to reflect on them. So you might want to have a look at that and the links that are there will take you to the readings which are all available online on that companion website. So when I click on that, it takes me out to the companion website. Now I've set up the external links so that they open in a new tab or a new window. So in, when you've gone externally to the LMS, you know that you're outside because you don't have the headings, etc. and the same look and feel. So you can simply close those windows and you will find the LMS on the other tab behind it. It also means that you can run the two windows open at the same time and flick back and forward between them. So again, um, you could access, for example, the peer review file, which is a Google Doc that you'll be able to go into and type um, your URL so that we'll be able to review each other's information and give feedback. I've actually set up the groups into little groups of three and four just so that you don't have to read and give feedback to all 14 participants. And what I've endeavoured to do with these groups is to um, make sure that we had someone from the School of Education in, and um, the Learning Development Centres because we have a few people from both of those, someone in each group. So I've tried to do that so that you'll be able to um, share your experience and knowledge and those people that have more knowledge in pedagogies and in technologies will be able to help those people who don't. So um, hopefully that will work well for us. So again, you can see now I've got two tabs open. I could leave this document open and just flick back into the course and continue working and looking and reading through whatever I wanted to here. Um, the links to the recommended readings took you out there. The Authentic eDesign Companion website will again take you out to that companion website where you'll find the different areas depending on what you want to know. So there's not a linear path through the course, even though with the LMS you work down the page um, in, in very much an order, you can flick back and forward um, to wherever you want to find information about. So obviously the task is going to give you an overview of the task itself and um, some of the, the things involved with getting through to the end. At the moment, um, when you see the underline and the shaded when you mouse over, it's the link that will take you to some more information. Don't feel that you have to read all of that information. For example, if you're really familiar with um, creating blogs and things like that, you may not want to read all the information about why blog and why make it public, and you might want to just jump straight to creating your blog if you're a technology um, competent person. If you're not, then I would suggest you click on the How to Blog page and have a look at the information of the links. There's some videos, there's some um, links to getting started, guides, etc. 
I have put blogger first, not just because it starts with a B, but because it is actually one of the easiest blogging tools. So if you haven't used a public blogging tool before, uh, that would be the one I would suggest to you. And WordPress is actually the more difficult out of them, in my opinion. Alright, there's also quite a lot of information here about, um, you know, starting a blog. And these are some recent posts by um, Sylvia Rosenthal Salino, who I've been following on blogs for quite some years. And she produces a lot of Creative Commons images that I use. Uh, in actual fact, that first one on the home page that you saw is one of her uh, images. She does quite a, a lot that I agree with and support. And it's really great that she makes some Creative Commons so that we're able to use them. The same with the groups, there's some information, these um, links will take you to find out what these groups are about and then underneath it I've put information about how to join. Links to creating the account, um, with Digo you actually need, once you've um, clicked on your, created your account, to come back here and just click on this link to join the group and you click on the apply to join this group button when you get there and it will send off a message to me which I'll approve. You won't be able to add things until you approve your membership is approved, but you'll be able to view any of the resources that I've already put there or that others have put there. There's a lot of documents that I've put up in Google Docs that we'll be using and it's probably an area that I would suggest to you is quite an easy one for you to put up your finished documents so that people can review it and give you feedback. So I have put a few little hints here, etc. So if you want to view it, you click on the file name to open the document and then um, if you want to edit it, it depends whether you've got um, editing rights and obviously with the peer review file you do, with some of the templates you don't. So to edit you simply click into the document and you either type in the URL or paste it. Um, if you don't have editing rights like the templates, you just download a copy of it or make a copy of it and therefore um, you will have your own rights. It will be then your document. If you download it and do it on your computer, you can upload the completed one. Or if you make a copy, you can type on it there and then online. And then it will be up to you to give share rights to other people. So um, you might want to have a look at some of those tutorials and some of the help files in Google Docs that will help you with that. And the same with Skype. If you've never used Skype before, it's a great tool for communicating in real time. So most of the time when I'm online, I turn my Skype on. So if you see me there, it means you can ask a quick question and get a response straight away. And if I'm not online, hopefully when we've all joined in, then someone else may be able to. And so instead of waiting for an email to come back and forward, um, you may get an instant answer on that. And it's just a different way to communicate. You'll also be able to, if you see people online, um, click the call button and speak to them verbally or even video call if you want to. And if you're all Skype members, which you will be to join the group, then that's all free. You don't need to pay anything for it. Okay, so I think that's sort of in a nutshell. Um, as I said, there's no specific things that have to be done by specific times. I have put a few suggestions um, here, for example, the introduction, if you try to finish that by next week that will give you a couple of weeks to get on with the readings and the task itself and um, some suggested completion dates here just so that you know we'll be able to review things and hopefully be on target for finishing in the four weeks but it is up to you to manage your time and to do what fits in and by all means you know if you don't get it done by the Sunday and it's Monday or Tuesday don't fret about that if you get it done earlier, great. Um, and then, you know, don't worry if people haven't given you feedback yet, they may still be working on theirs. But I really strongly encourage you to connect and network. And hopefully the network connections you make during this course, you'll be able to continue on in the future after the course. So I look forward to chatting to you all online. Bye for now.